What up, this is Rama Screen covering movies, TV, and entertainment, and here's my review of Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Hey, before you watch this review, please subscribe to my channel, press that like button, and ring that bell so you can get notified whenever I post new videos. And if you would like to help support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash ramascreen. That's patreon.com slash ramascreen. Let's rock this. Will you look at that? This must be the year of not-too-shabby sequels. From Godzilla King of the Monsters, to The Secret Life of Pets 2, to 47 Meters Down Uncaged, to Zombieland Double Tap, and now Maleficent Mistress of Evil. I have to admit, I did not re-watch the first film in preparation for reviewing this one. So I only watched the first film once, just once, back then when it came out. I remember bits and pieces about it. But that said, I do genuinely find Maleficent Mistress of Evil to be very enjoyable. We all know that Angelina Jolie looks perfect in this role, but this time around, she looks like she really, really, really owns it. Especially when her wings are spread. My god, she is a glorious, majestic sight to behold as this iconic character. So yes, despite the film being wonky at times and having heavy-handed dialogues, Maleficent Mistress of Evil aim to visually blow your mind and to entertain you at every turn. Welcome! to the sequel to the 2014 global box office hit. Maleficent and her goddaughter Aurora are in a good place in terms of their relationship. That is, until Prince Philip proposes to Aurora, and she says yes. Although this impending marriage serves as a way to unite not just two kingdoms, but also the worlds of man and fairies, the animosity, suspicion, and hatred between those two kinds still lingers. This situation pulls Maleficent and Aurora apart to opposing sides in a great war sparked by a queen with a long-age grudge. Again, if you want to list the cool parts about this movie, you need to start with Angelina Jolie, who is just absolutely ravishing. Whenever she says, well, well, or whenever she turns around to give you that glance, only Angelina Jolie can make an anti-hero irresistibly magnetic. I am just in awe of her from start to finish. I also think that the battle scenes in this film are thrilling, creative, and well-staged, and there's enough context leading up to that battle that makes it seem impactful, like the characters are putting it all on the line. This obviously is not Michelle Pfeiffer's first rodeo as a villain, she has done that, and she's done it just as well in other movies in the past. The same goes with this one, where Michelle is just deliciously sinister. Despite the little information that we have about her character's motivation. I also love the stunning visual effects and the breathtaking cinematography. And I think anybody who is a big fan of production design will geek out at the various settings that this movie has to offer and how they contrast from one another. The colors in particular are so strikingly bold and vibrant. And the whole themes of prejudice and polarization are quite timely, but they're not preachy nor forced down your throats at all. Now, as I implied earlier, some of the dialogues are... What's the word I'm looking for here? unrefined, if you will, and some of the expressionless performances from some of the supporting roles, especially that of Prince Philip, are the equivalents of a cardboard cutout, and for a big chunk of the film, it doesn't seem to know what to do with Aurora, during which Maleficent gets sidelined to another arc where she mostly does nothing but observe. So there are parts about Maleficent Misters of Evil that makes this movie far from perfect. But overall, it is still a smashing sequel that the whole family can have a wonderful time watching. 